Roman theater began in 240 BC and remained popular throughout the mid-4th century. After the 4th century, the popularity declined. This decline started when the Roman Empire began to fall in the later part of the 4th century CE. As the empire split into west and east, the eastern part became known as Constantinople. The downfall of the Roman theater happened along with the downfall of the Western Roman Empire, which came about due to the disintegration of the government's administration. Fourth century theater of the era is generally separated into two categories, the genres of tragedy and comedy, with tragedy being the main art form. Tragedy brought most people to the theaters, and helped to build the initial popularity of the plays. For roughly half a century, the tragedies remained the most common style in Roman theater. The 5th century saw a change to this method, as there were now more comedies and fewer tragedies being played out on the stage. It was thought that the tragedies were no longer desirable, and their overuse was becoming predictable, causing this decline in theater's attendance. The attempts to increase both popularity and attendance, comedies became the primary form, which not only brought people back to the theaters, but which saw an increase in overall attendance as the comedies were shown to be better received than the tragedies. Roman theater was highly influenced by Greek drama. At the time, the Romans were poor, so they couldn't afford the big stages. They had stadiums. These venues were almost always full, but the seating capacity was tiny compared to the city's population, and most of the cities went to the play. In addition, the costumes were had only minor details, so the play would rely more on skill of the actors rather than the large appearance of the sets. The 4th century had small seating, small productions with lots of tragedies, and this began to change in the 5th century. As the Roman Empire changed and gained more wealth, the theaters also changed, building bigger arenas, bigger theaters, as well as building stages. Meant they now had bigger seating capacities, the theaters began to present more comedies and the costumes became more detailed. There were various types of performances, which included to appeal to many people as possible. And to keep the theaters from becoming boring, these types of performances included pantomime, which includes solo dance, the use of masks, elaborate storytelling, and tales of mythology. There was also mime, which was quite different than pantomime, these plays were spoken, usually short presentations, sometimes used elaborate casts and spectacles, could be serious or comic, normally didn't use masks, had women in them, and at times even contained sex and violence. Due to the nature of these plays, they were typically scoffed at by Christianity. Welcome to my part of the video, where you'll be learning about Seneca the Younger, not the older one. His real name is Lucius Annius Seneca, born the year 4 BCE in Cordoba, Hispania. He was a Stoic philosopher and soon would be the advisor of Emperor Nero. However, he was forced to take his own life because he was um, a suspect in the conspiracy of the death of Nero. Do I have to do this? Come on, can't I like just move out of the, the city? Nope, I'm afraid not. <sighs> okay. Oh! Ah. 
Seneca's death has become the subject of many paintings, however, so I guess that's a plus of killing himself. Oh. 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 Mm, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Oh. The definition of stoicism is the endurance of pain or hardship without displaying any emotion or feeling. And also not complaining either about pain. The Stoics believed that virtue... Another fact of the Stoics, the Stoics believed that virtue is of the highest good. Virtue basically means showing behavior of high moral standards, so you basically are a man or woman living by high moral standards. So like, if someone was homeless on the side of the street, then you'd feel the need to give them money, then that's showing virtue. Without anything, without receiving anything back. So, basically giving without receiving yourself. Like Christmas, except you don't get anything. A quote from Stanford University says, a favor consists in the relevant state of mind of the giver and similarity in the grateful state of mind of the receiver. Seneca believed that doing good deeds was one of the highest moral codes that he would have. Seneca believed that doing a good deed means helping someone without wanting to receive something yourself. The Stoics, we should have more of them in our society today. I mean, if we weren't all so greedy, I mean, maybe world peace, you know? Oh, Seneca died, um the year 65, common era. Um, so, 65 years after the year of zero, at the age of 69. So, I mean, it, it wasn't a short-lived life, but it wasn't as long. It, the man did a lot in his time. What a nice day out today. Man, I feel really nice today. I'm gonna find a homeless person. Oh, there's one right there. Hello, sir, how are you doing today? I'm fine, I guess. I, I really need some money, that'd really help. Oh, you poor man, here. Let's see what I got here. Permit, ah, here it is, $20. Just for you. Oh, thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too. Man, I hope he spends his money well. Of course this is Springfield, I mean, there's a lot to do and buy. I think we all know what I'm gonna buy with this. I mean, just look at my socks. Ooh, you already know. Oh dang, look at that. I'm buying some more money socks. During the time of the ancient Romans, theater played a big part in their culture. Many times, plays were performed at festivals, often religious festivals. In Rome, there were over 200 celebrations to honor the Roman gods, and plays were performed during these celebrations, making it possible to see a play in Rome almost every day of the year. The Roman actors were slaves, but they were also paid although it was only a, small, a very small amount of money. In order to compensate for this, many wealthy Romans sponsored the theater for the plays to be able to be performed. Some of these plays even opposed the church in Rome at the time. The theater also made a star system out of the actors, meaning some were able to be famous in their towns. Plays were used to bring people together by being completely free for the public to watch. Ancient Rome was very harsh, yet artistic and a creative place. The citizens of Rome were qu quite harsh to the actors performing. In some cases, if the crowd did not like the actors performing, they would throw sticks or food at them. But if they liked the actors or their performances, they would heavily praise them and celebrate them. In Rome, they have m had many sp specific beliefs that are very different from ours today. Rome was less philosophical than Greece. However, they took inspiration from Greece often. 
One way they took inspiration from the ancient Greeks was their religion. They used many figures that were prominent in the Greek religion as a part of their own, but with a different name. For example, the Roman god Jupiter was very similar to the Greek god Zeus, them being both being the supreme gods of their religions. There was no king in Rome at the time. There was also a big disconnect between the rich and the poor. The rich were treated better than the poor in many aspects of life, including punishments for their actions. The poor would often be killed for a crime or sold into slavery, but the rich often would be let off with no repercussions. Another belief of the ancient Romans was called Stoicism. Stoicism was a Greek and Roman school of thought that heavily focused on strong morals and a highly developed mind that was very thoughtful. This was a very big deal to the Romans, and it was put into everyday life. The ancient Romans focused on thought and being creative. They were a very strong-minded people who were also able to develop a huge civilization throughout their history. Oh, you're good, you yellow dog, aren't you? Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Okay. My name is Augustus, and I'll be talking to you about Roman entertainment methods and how Romans advanced the art of theater. Roman life comprised of war and conquest, but that's about only 15% of the population. The rest of the Roman people lived in a normal pre-technical well, pre-technology life. But as anyone can tell you, normal life is boring. So the Romans combated boredom with various forms of entertainment. The like the the Colosseum. The Colosseum is the largest of Rome's amphitheaters. Amphitheaters were used as stadiums for gladiator fights and animal fighting rings, and occasionally both. There were other ways the Romans entertained themselves. They had chariot races held in circuses. They also had the art of drama, which were performed in theaters. Roman theaters were based off of Greek theaters, but Romans made some minor improvements, such as a curtain and a backdrop. The Romans also built their theaters from the ground up, even making proper foundations so that the theater could be a standalone structure while the Greeks were kind of lazy and dug theirs into hillsides. Another improvement that the Romans made on Greek designs were adding sections to their seats. They also built awnings to hang over the audience and the actors, so that no one could get exposed to too much weather. The Romans certainly made many improvements to the changes in the art of theater, and many of them still last to this day. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some very important business to get back to. Come here. Come on. Who's a good dog? Oh, who's another good dog? Oh, I got two good dogs.